Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developmental Psychology, DEP 2004. I am Dr. Rivera. Now, there are a lot of genetic abnormalities, um, mutations that occurred generations and generations ago. And because they get passed down genetically, well, sometimes they end up affecting us um, in negative ways. Now, PKU is a trait uh, like that. And PKU, what ends up happening is that the recessive allele has a mutation that prevents it from breaking down a specific chemical that your body produces when it breaks down certain foods. So when you eat fish or meat or diet soda or cheese, when your body breaks down these foods, they end up creating a chemical called phenylalanine. And phenylalanine, um, for most people, it's not going to be a problem because you have alleles that create proteins that break apart the phenylalanine, and so you just digest it out. You just get, through, get rid of it through your digestive system. But if you end up with a recessive trait for uh, PKU, what ends up happening is that that recessive trait won't allow that protein to be created correctly. And now that protein can't break down the phenylalanine. And now the phenylalanine might start to build up. If you have a heterozygous set of alleles, one dominant and one recessive, well, it doesn't matter because that dominant allele makes the protein correctly. And then that protein breaks down the phenylalanine and the other one doesn't help because that protein doesn't do anything. It doesn't break down the phenylalanine, but the dominant one does. And so it doesn't matter. You will break down phenylalanine correctly and you will digest it. But if you end up with two recessive alleles, what happens is that neither of your alleles can make the protein necessary to break down phenylalanine. And that means that if you end up eating a lot of fish, dairy, meat, wheat, eggs, things like that, um, your body will create phenylalanine and then it'll start to build up. And the phenylalanine will actually destroy your nerves. That means that when you are a child, you will develop normally. And you might actually develop into a normal young person. Um, but then as you get older and the phenylalanine continues to build in your body, it will start to destroy your nerves and eventually your brain. And so uh, this individual is going to start to regress. Their cognitive skills are going to go down significantly. They're going to have a harder time controlling their impulses. These individuals will often uh, swivel and shake their heads and arms a lot. They'll often want to eat a lot. And it doesn't matter if they get full, they can't stop themselves from eating and eating really fast because the parts of the brain that would tell you, hey, you're full or hey, slow down or hey, this is good, enjoy it for a second. Um, all of that essentially has been destroyed. And essentially this person will develop a cognitive disorder after um, they had developed a normal cognitive ability, probably into childhood and maybe even adolescence. After that, they're gonna start to develop a cognitive disorder and they're going to sort of not be able to control their behavior and their thoughts um, quite as well. Now, PKU is a recessive trait, right? Most genetic abnormalities are recessive traits because if you have a genetic abnormality that is dominant, it will usually kill the individual before that individual can pass it down. There is an exception to this, and that exception is Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is also a neurologic disorder, but it begins to occur in middle age, where essentially the person stops 
having control over their body. And even though their mind might work, their mind cannot control their body. And they essentially become trapped in their own body. Now, Huntington's disease is dominant, and it's one of the few genetic abnormalities that is dominant, and it's the only one that we're going to talk about. That means that if you get passed down a dominant allele, right, a capital H in this scenario, it doesn't matter that the other allele is recessive because the dominant will take over. And that means that these two individuals who will end up being heterozygous, that means that in middle age, they will develop Huntington's disease. In order to not have Huntington's disease, you will need to have two recessive alleles. So if you don't have Huntington's disease, if nobody in your family has Huntington's disease, and that means that you have um, recessive alleles. Um, if uh, you know that you have Huntington's disease or that someone in your family might have Huntington's disease, that means that that person has at least one dominant allele. That's all they need is just the one. Now, Tay-Sachs disease is also a neurological disorder, and it is fatal, and it begins early on in childhood, probably in infancy, where um, essentially the symptoms build up, deafness, decreased eye contact, blindness, decreased muscle tone, and it may end up killing the child before they get much older. There are a few symptoms that are, are very obvious or at least obvious to the parent. One of them is that the child can go essentially rather limp. A child that, you know, was active goes very limp and now um, they're basically not moving. They don't seem to have control over their body. And when they go to have the baby checked, whether the baby has already started the symptoms or not, they'll sometimes see a uh, capillary that kind of looks like a cherry, like a little dot of red. Um, and that often tends to be a sign of Tay-Sachs disease. And again, Tay-Sachs disease is a recessive trait. That means that in order to have it, you must have the recessive traits, uh, both recessive traits. Um, and so if, you know, neither mom has it nor dad has it um, and they are not carriers, then they're not going to pass it down to their kids. If mom and dad don't have it, but they're both carriers, they both have to be carriers, um, then they might end up passing it down to about a quarter of their children. Um, again, remember that these uh, Punit squares aren't telling you like, oh, your first child is going to have this and your second child is going to have that. This is just the chance, um, the odds that the child will end up with that specific trait. And so there is about a 25% chance that one of their children um, is going to end up with Tay-Sachs disease in this case. If only one of the parents is a carrier, again, it would be impossible to pass it down because um, either the children will end up with dominant traits or they will end up as heterozygous. Another genetic abnormality that you might go over as you're reading is sickle cell anemia. Now, sickle cell anemia is a genetic trait that affects your blood, specifically your red blood cells. And what happens is that if a blood cell that has the sickle cell trait becomes highly stressed, usually because it's become infected by something, then it will uh, essentially die. It'll turn into the sickle shape, a kind of like a crescent shape, and when that cell is just uh, destroyed and taken out, out of your body. Sickle cell, having the sickle cell trait can actually be good um, if you live in certain parts of the planet. And specifically, if you live in certain parts of the planet where malaria um, is prominent, then having the sickle cell tray can actually protect you. How? Well, if malaria attacks the red blood cells, then 
the red blood cells will turn into sickles and get thrown out. If you happen to have heterozygous alleles, then this is good in these parts of the world because what ends up happening is half of your cells have the sickle cell trait um, and they will break apart or turn into sickles and get thrown out um, when they get attacked by malaria. But the other ones will continue to try to um, get oxygen throughout your body. But if you end up having um, all of your blood cells with the sickle cell trait, then that means that all of your cells do this if they get attacked by malaria. And so all of a sudden, um, high stress might turn your red blood cells into the sickle shape and they die and get thrown out of your body, expelled from your body. But that means that there are no red blood cells to get oxygen to different parts of your body. And this can present a big problem. Now, if you happen to uh, not have uh, the sickle cell trait at all, then that means that you have two dominant alleles. That's what probably most people have. This is probably good for most people in most parts of the world to not have the sickle cell trait. But if you happen to live in one of the parts of the world where malaria is uh, prominent, then that means that this individual, the individual without the sickle cell trait, will have no protection against malaria. Um, and so uh, this person, um, even though they have the quote unquote normal trait, they are actually gonna be more likely to die because they don't have that sickle cell trait and they might be more likely to um, get malaria and die from it. Whereas the people who are heterozygous are going to be more likely to be protected from the malaria. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and remember that the best way to contact me is directly through Canvas. I hope to hear from you soon.